Hi, it's time for the math. Easy solution. Uh, Turn discuss further into the laboratory project on Taylor polynomials. And now look at question two. So yeah, make sure to watch my earlier video on question one. Just to quickly recap on that, I showed in question one that uh, basically if you were to approximate a function using a linear function, you just draw a tangent line across it. And then you pretty much have a quote reasonable approximation at any given range that you are uh, deem yeah, accurate for whatever function you're looking at. So as you can see that the straight line approximates that curve over there. But in question one I showed that we could use a higher degree polynomial, in other words a quadratic or a, uh, or a parabola function to approximate and I showed that it was actually much better for some functions such as this one right here where the function we're approximating is f of x equals cos of x is that's in black right here and then the uh, linear approximation L, L of x equals 1 just a straight line above over there and we're approximating it at the point x equals to 0 so as you can see a straight line doesn't uh, approximate that well but a parabola here 1 minus x squared over 2 as you can see is a pretty good approximation of that uh, hyperbolic, I mean of that regular uh, trigonomic cosine function over there. So yeah, the problem was much better. So let's look at question two. So question two states determine the values of x for which the quadratic approximation f of x equals to p of x in problem one is accurate to within point one. In other words, uh, f of x equals to p of x well within point one here and basically see what range it is uh, within point one. I'll show you what that means. Basically, uh, it also gives us a hint. This is a uh, remember laboratory project, just the uh, interesting project at the end of my, some of the chapters in my calculus book. They usually give hints. So this hint says graph y equals p of x, y equals cos x minus point one, and y equals cos x plus point one on a common screen. And I'll graph that eventually. But first, let's look at what it means to be accurate within point one. So what this means, the accuracy to within point one means that well the difference between the function we're approximating and the approximating function here, or our f of x and our p of x, uh, this, well we could also write it, I'm gonna write this as the difference here. This is the absolute value we're, we're taking, so it doesn't matter where you, uh, the difference you take it from, if you put it as subtracting p of x uh, by f of x or f of x by p of x. It's the same thing, but I'm writing it like this because I'm gonna remove f of x from this over there uh, as I get through this derivation. Basically what this means is that the absolute value of the difference is less than 0.1 so that these are very very close to each other. In other words when we plug in the values here p of x from my earlier video in question one that's just going to be I'll put it in a bracket 1 minus x squared over 2 like that. And then we're subtracting it by the function we want to approximate cos of x. So the absolute value like that is less than 0.1. And uh, this just means absolute value, if we were to remove that absolute value, we could just put this as negative 0.1 is gonna be less than, well, one minus x squared over two minus cos of uh, x like that. And then this is gonna be less than 0.1. So the absolute value of this has to be within 0.1. In other words, yeah, this can be any value between negative 0.1 and positive 0.1. So this is the, these are basically identical uh, inequalities there. So now what I'm going to do is, because as you can see the hint is we want to graph that, but we can uh, show that by adding cos to both sides. So add cos of x on uh, basically on every side. So what we get is a cos of x minus 0.1 subtracted by 1 minus x squared over 2 is going to be less than and then when we add it over there cos x plus 0.1 so as you can see here to do that all we have to do is well what we could do is graph as the hint sh uh, as the hint shows we can graph p of x as well as cos x minus 0.1 and cos x plus 0.1 and then wherever this is between them that is accurate within point 0.1. Yeah, so here I've graphed it using Desmos calculator, and as you can see over here, f of x is in black over there, that's f x equals cos x. And then in red is the parabola that we have, uh, that we're approximating f of x by, and then the green is cos x minus point 0.1, and the blue is cos x plus point 0.1, 
and this is the difference between that and f of x. This is going to be 0.1, and this side as well as 0.1 over there. And as you can see, the, the parabola extends beyond it at roughly this point. So that any, any point beyond it over here is going to be like this one here. This is greater than 0.1. And likewise, onto this side, we have over here where it crosses. So to see the red there as you go beyond it, this is going to be, actually it's going to be from this black one there. So the difference here is going to be greater than 0.1. And this is symmetric, and, and you could even see it here, so that the actual range that's going to be less than 0.1 is at this intersection point. So at this very point there, and you can see that this domain across there, if we go all the way down, it's going to be roughly half of this one, 1 and, point, and 1.5. So that means this is about 1.25 roughly over here is all the way down here, this is about uh, negative 1.25, negative or roughly negative 1.25. Yeah, so from the figure we could see the region in which p of x is accurate to, to within 0.1. As you can see, it's going to be well in between from there to there. That is where it's going to be accurate to. And it appears that the region is uh, between x is negative 1.25 and, uh, and 1.25 like that, so in between uh, those two values there. But if we zoom even further, <laughs> so here I've zoomed in uh, much more in depth there just to see the point. So if we go to 1.25, it's still not intersecting. That's the green is over this one, and then the red is the parabola there. But as you can see, it's more of a 1.26. So it's more about this point. So actually when we zoom in the intersection point, it appears to be about x equals to plus or minus 1.26. And also note, we include the negative because the functions are symmetric about the y-axis. So plus, you could do that for the same thing on the negative side, it's going to be the same thing. Thus the approximation cos x is roughly equal to 1 minus x squared over 2 is, a, is accurate to within 0.1 within x is between negative 1.26 and 1. .2. Two, six positive. And again, then note it is not easy to solve for the x values directly because we would have to solve the following calculation at the intersection point of the above figure. So that's over here. That's where it's intersecting, and that's the green and the red values here. So we got to uh, equate those and solve it. In other words, what we get, what we need to solve is. Um, it is 1 minus x squared over 2 equals 2, and then we have now uh, cos of x minus 0.1. Now if we move this over to the other side, what we get is a 1.1 minus x squared over 2 equals to a cos x. Now this one is not that straightforward to solve. I'm not sure how to solve it directly. So this is not easy to solve. So you might need, yeah, yeah I'm not sure of any basic ways of solving it, you might have to do something else. Yeah, you need some other methods, but a, uh, you could also solve it numerically online, but if you have any other methods, let me know. And uh, so let's solve this using an online numerical solver. I use Wolfram, you just type in 1 minus x squared over 2 equals to cos x minus 0.1, it automatically graphs it, <laughs> puts the intersection points over there, exactly like I graphed it, and then it solves it. There's also gives a, some other alternative forms of it. This one is an imaginary format over there, or a complex format. And then the solutions are, numerically it solves it, it's approximately negative 1.26124, 1, and this one is 1.26124. So yeah, our, our, uh, our x equals plus or minus 1.26 estimation was pretty close. So thus the domain for x in which p of x is accurate to f of x within 0.1 is going to be negative 1.2612 x and uh, is, it's going to be x between that value and positive 1.2612. Notice I've removed the 4 there just to be uh, safe, just a technical note. I'm not sure whether Wolfram, uh, yeah, Wolfram calculator rounds up or down, so to be safe I have removed the last digit in their solved x values and for example if they round down then we can include the last digit because they would still ensure that x, absolute value of x is less than the exact solution value. For example, let's assume that the exact value is x equals 1.261345. I mean, one, yeah, 1345 like that. Actually, well, there is no 3 there. So 1.261345. Uh, 
uh, two, six, one, two. Yeah, one, two, four, five over there. So there's an extra five. So if it rounds down, so rounding down, I'll show you what I mean by this. Rounding down, what we end up getting. I just want to add this uh, section in this video because it's very interesting. So rounding down, what we'll get is x is approximately equal to one, two, six, one, two, and then we round down go to four like that. Say they only can have five digits max. So let's say that is what we have. Yeah, so thus what we have is, all right, thus, for our case we wanted x is less than, well, 1.26124, and this is nonetheless, because we round it down, it's gonna be less than 126, the exact value. So it's less than that, so this is still okay. And you can even graph this out just to illustrate it like this. This is the y x value, and let's say we had, this is our fx. And then we have over here, I'll just draw this like that. This is our fx minus 0.1. And then let's say we had the function, the parabola, it's, it's currently between here and here, this is gonna be, well, it's 0.1. And then let's say we had the parabola go down like that, and this is at the intersection point over there. So as you can see, uh, this one here, this is the exact value. Let's say this was uh, x is equal to 1.261245. Yeah, so thus if we round it down, then that means it's gonna be somewhere over here. Let's just go exaggerate it. So let's say we go all the way over here, and that's rounded down. It's still gonna be less than over this one, 1.26124. And here I just moved things around, move this over there. I'll move it a bit closer here actually. Say so this is the, uh, we round down value of there, just exaggerate it. That's the exact, and this is the rounded down. And nonetheless, this one here going all the way across, the difference between here and here, that's the f of x, and this is our p of x. This is, well, less than 0.1. So we are good to go, that's all fine. But the problem is if we round it up, then technically there are values of, well, absolute value of x that are larger than the exact value, uh, which means that for those values, the difference p of x uh, minus f of x is greater than uh, 0.1. So the difference is actually greater, which we can't have. For example, let's assume that the exact value is uh, x equals 1.261235, and then rounding up, Say, yeah, so if we round up here, and then what we get is that value, x is roughly equal to 1.26, better, better like that, 1.2612, and then four, so the five goes into there. So this means, this means, yeah, so I'll write uh, thus, we have x, well, we, our requirement was is less than 1.26124, except this is greater than the exact. So that's greater than the exact value, which equals to 1.261235, because remember, we added, uh, we increased it. One, two, uh, what is it, six. So then this, we can't have this. So I'll circle this. And this is, uh, yeah, put an X. Can't have this. Yes, yeah, so uh, we could even illustrate this further by doing the same thing as the rounding down one. So X, Y, like that. And let's say we had, again, we had, I'll just draw a line like that, line like this. This is our F of X. This is our uh, value here, F of X minus 0.1. And then we had our function like that. This is our p of x, like that. And again, this difference across here, there, that's our 0.1, because we're subtracting it by 0.1 on uh, every value of f of x. So then let's say this exact value is, uh, this exact one is equal to 1, 2, 6, 1, 2, and then 3, 5. So if we round it up, then we would, we would get a value somewhere across there, and let's say this is rounding up and we get one, two, six, one, two, four, like that. So we round it up, but notice here, this is beyond it. Uh, this is all the way across here, and this value is actually greater than 0.1. So we can't have that. As you can see, it's greater than 0.1, this difference from f of x and the p of x, 
for these for this whole range here. So then this whole range from here to from here to there is going to be well greater than 0.1. So we can't have that. So so just to be safe, uh, I just uh, remove that last digit here and just go from <laughs> go with this value. So one two. So remove those. So yeah, that's. Uh, I just wanted to add that little uh, segment at the end, just because it's very very interesting. And in fact, I actually had to redo this video because I forgot about that. I included the form. Like, wait a second. What if it's uh, rounded up or down? Anyways, that is all for today. If you follow along, this very interesting video on what accuracy means and how to determine it. Uh, determine how accurate a function is when approximating other functions. And it was all for today. Uh, yeah, make sure to watch this video in the end question one. I'll be going over the later questions, so stay tuned for the full series. So yeah, thanks for watching, and like always, you can download these exact notes in the link below, as well as viewing these notes on Steemit in article format, and also make sure to check out my math forums and post any cool math or science related stuff you find. Anyways, that's all for today. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned for another math easy solo.